you very much uh, to the fireside chat. I know there are a lot of questions. I also saw already on the uh, uh, Google Drive that uh, audience is inputting their questions through the QR code. I encourage you to do that. Uh, next is our great honor to have Mr. Uh, Su Hong Ye, the um, CFO Emeritus from Meituan Dianping. Uh, Mr. Su, uh, welcome. He was uh, in Bay Area, same as all of us. Uh, and uh, uh, more than 10 years ago, he decided to return to uh, mainland China, developing the new career. And I remember you told me it was originally a hobby while you were working in the US, but you turned that into a multi tens of billions dollars uh, business now. Uh, and we know there must be a lot of struggle and uh, pivoted and all, all that. So let's welcome him uh, to hear his uh, uh, great effort and his uh, lessons, uh, how we can learn also from that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the uh, great opportunity to uh, share my journey as an entrepreneur in China uh, for the past 15 years. Uh, I, as uh, mentioned, I used to live here uh, from, I think, 1999 to 2005 uh, uh, as an engineer in the Silicon Valley. And I decided to return to the uh, China uh, to to start a company uh, in China. So I will share this the, uh, story about the idea of the uh, Dianping. I started with the idea of the Dianping.com. So uh, uh, I have a partner is also the, the founder and the CEO of the Dianping.com, uh, a very good friend for, for many years. And we uh, used to live together in the Silicon Valley uh, for quite a period. And uh, we, the one of the hobby we have is uh, we, uh, I don't know, most of you probably know the, there's a guide called Zaga Survey, right? It's a red book. And uh, uh, the red book for New York City, the red book for San Francisco, Bay Area, right? I still remember it cost like, like $14.99 uh, per book, right? If you, uh, you can buy it uh, from the Barnes Noble, or well, now it's the Amazon for sure. Um, and uh, we, we used to have that book, and uh, we used the book to uh, to try a lot of the nice restaurants in the Bay Area. And uh, this is one of the hobby we have. And um, another thing is, the, I think uh, Tao, uh, he is graduated from the Warden Business School in 2002, I think. And uh, he tried to find a job in the Silicon Valley. So that that how he came uh, from the East Coast to the West Coast and uh, joined me. And she, he tried to find a job uh, in the Silicon Va uh, Valley. But I, I still remember at that time, the whole valley is kind of broken, right? And uh, there's uh, no traffic on the 101. But I see a lot of traffic now. I mean, a uh, lot of people is cannot find a job. Uh, all the major, it's an inter internet bubble, right? It's a lot of major uh, company uh, was broken at that time. So he couldn't find a job. That's the, another good thing, right? So s sometimes if you cannot find a job, it's not necessarily it's a bad thing. Uh, so uh, later on, he decided to uh, back to the uh, China. So he actually started the, the Dianping.com uh, in 2003 and uh, close to 2004. I was still here. I um, worked for a startup company, and I was uh, uh, is a colleague uh, as a Raymond, Raymond Chan in security and also study in the Berkeley as a part-time MBA program. So after the, in 2004, I think, uh, uh, I, I think it's a winter break uh, for the school. I went back to Shanghai as well. And uh, so the Tao asked me to, hey, why not you just come back to China to join us? It's a great opportunity. So we started to write the business plan at that time. I, I still remember the, uh, the winter break for the 2004. We started to build up the business plan for the uh, Dianping.com. Um, and uh, another thing I want to mention is uh, if you start a business, you really need the time, place, people, all is in the 
uh, in the good position. The one thing is, the, I think at that time, 2005, uh, the online uh, user penetration in China is grow very fast and uh, grow very well. And another thing is particularly very important is the, the rise of China, the, the rise of the middle class population in China. Uh, so the consumer not only uh, they want to have a, a meal outside, they want to have a good meal, they want to have the lifestyle uh, in the city. So this is another thing, uh, the middle, middle class population is uh, uh, getting uh, bigger and bigger uh, at that time. And the third thing I read in Chinese, uh, in, in Chinese is uh, the, all the Chinese people lo just love eat, right? That's the, that's the nature, that's the culture of us. So, so um, that's the, another very good uh, uh, the baseline uh, for our business model. So the fourth one is also, uh, as a matter of fact, is uh, the business idea is inspired by the, the Zagar survey and also the, the Wikipedia at that time. Because we need to uh, generate a lot of user's reviews from online. Zagar survey, uh, they got the user review from the facts. Uh, they started that business in, the, I think it's the 1970s. Uh, they used the facts to collect the user's feedback. But uh, uh, instead of using facts, we have the internet, right? So all the uh, consumer can give us the feedback, give us the reviews online. So we are kind of pioneer uh, in this area. We are founded uh, like uh, uh, two more years earlier than the, I think the Yelp, or Yelp uh, here. Uh, so that's the foundation uh, for, for our business, uh, business idea. And uh, the third thing I want to mention is the, the business plan we had at that time. Um, it's very, very important for, for the, I think for three things uh, to, uh, to compose a very strong business plan. One is always think about the customer value. What kind of customer value we can bring uh, to, the, uh, to the consumer, to the customer. So obviously we help the consumer for the Dianping.com. At that time, actually, it's not for Dianping.com. I will mention it later. So uh, we definitely help people to find uh, a right uh, restaurant to eat, uh, very easily to find. So the core is to improve the, uh, our users, our consumers' uh, lifestyle, lifetime quality, right? Uh, the third one is core competency. So we have to very focus on the, the business model uh, what is the core competency uh, to, to having this review side, the lifestyle side, is we are able to uh, collect the uh, user's feedback so to help us to, uh, to build the content. The UGC at that time is the core competency, so we are very focused on that. Uh, the third one is revenue model. So we have so many revenue models at the very beginning. Uh, even uh, we project a very uh, high revenue uh, income from the, the book. Uh, we also have the book published in China, a small red book. And also the very large amount of the revenue size uh, coming from the short messaging uh, search value added service. But both of them uh, actually didn't work at that time. I will mention it later. So the first one I want, want to mention is also, <laughs> I think it's a billion dollar lessons before the uh, Dianping.com. At the very beginning, our website is called zsurvey.com. Actually, survey, uh, uh, zsurvey.com. Uh, actually, at the very beginning, we call that. Um, that's a very, very bad idea. We didn't spend uh, enough time to think of, uh, think, uh, think of our brand at that time. Um, and after that, we realized Chinese cannot spell this survey. Uh, it's very hard for Chinese people to spell out the survey, to type, type out the survey. So, and later on, after like two years, we changed to Dianping.com. Uh, still a very, very bad idea. Um, uh, Dianping is a common word uh, in Chinese. And the term Dianping can be noun, can be verb. It's very, very bad. So we realize, after 10 years, we, we start to realize it's cost like a billion dollars uh, for we had a very bad branding name, 
So if you want to start a 2C service business, um, you have to spend a lot of time to think, think of the, a brand name. So nowadays, I, I think Apple is a great name, right? It's a noun. It's a real, it's a Apple, right? It's a real, um, it's very easy to associate in your mind. Um, in China, I think there's a, a, a smartphone uh, manufacturer uh, called Xiaomi. Uh, Xiaomi is a very good uh, brand name because rice, like little rice, is a very, it's a noun. It's a real stuff can easily to associate. But uh, both Dianping, even the Meituan is a very bad name. Okay, it's uh, uh, very abstract. It's uh, very, very difficult to, um, to spread out. Uh, it's very difficult for branding. Uh, it's uh, very di difficult to you know, uh, spread as a word of mouth. It's, it's very hard. So it's a billion dollar lesson. So if uh, any of you in the future to want to start a to see service, definitely number one is to take a very long time to think of a very good brand name. That's very, very important. So nowadays in China, if you start a to see business, all the animals, animals name are taken. <laughs> Elephant and whatever you can think about the tiger, leon, uh, yeah, so you just name it. All the stuff to eat is also taken, like orange, banana, whatever. It's all taken. I, it's not bad. I, actually, they, they all realize what happened, right? So you have to uh, at least do, to, to create a very uh, easy to memorize the uh, brand name. So it's a small, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big lesson. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a small point, it's a big lesson for us. So that's a uh, brief history, uh, how we started the, the company, um, the idea of the Dianping.com. And um, the whole company, we went through uh, three major transitions I will uh, briefly mention uh, as following. So the first transition is from web to smartphone. So uh, what I mean transition is, the, as the matter of fact, is the opportunity. You, you have to grasp the opportunity as as quick as soon as possible. So uh, I just mentioned at the very beginning, uh, we know the mobile is very very important for the local life search, right? So, but uh, when the time back to 2005, uh, there's a tons of the feature phone. I still using the feature phone, right? So the short messenger is still very popular. Uh, the WAP, WAP uh, kind of application is still very, um, uh, it's very dominant at that time for the feature phone. But the, we tried to create the, some search application on the mobile. Uh, we had a short messaging search, uh, search engine uh, for the, all the mobile user. Um, so you have to send a lot of short messaging. For example, if you're looking for let's say fra French la uh, restaurant in, in Shanghai, you first type in fresh, fresh, uh, French restaurant, then we send you three French restaurant uh, to, your, uh, to your phone. And then you have to reply one, two, three, which rest restaurant uh, you will pick. Then we send another short messaging to you to mention the review, the recommended dish, so on and so forth. It's take very long time, right? Actually, it's not working. Uh, the user experience is just very bad. And the feature phone as well. And a uh, lot of feature phone, a lot of uh, uh, WAP applications still not very use, user friendly. Until 2008. I think we have to thank uh, for the Steve Jobs, for the, for the iPhone, right? I mean, it's a, such a great product. So we are the, probably in China, we are the first one to capture the opportunity to start our app. Uh, for the, uh, for the uh, iPhone uh, in China. So for a very long time, we almost like, uh, we finally find out this is the, our opportunity to, um, to kind of embrace the, the, the smartphone trend. So we put a lot of efforts, and we are one of the earliest uh, app developer in, uh, I think, in China. So we put a lot of resources and money to develop the, the first application for the iPhone. Uh, that really gives a lot of return, actually. Uh, we used to be 
a number one for the lifestyle application in China for a very long time. So we, we were able to use this opportunity uh, to acquire a lot of users uh, in China. So, um, so the first transition is, uh, was very successful and uh, that helped us to transition from a web only application to smartphone application. And uh, it becomes just for lifestyle, uh, local search type of business, smartphone the, uh, is so, smartphone application is so important. Uh, the user, exper uh, user experience is uh, uh, kind of the, uh, tremendously uh, changed, right? Improved. So another great thing for 2008, as people here still probably still remember the financial crisis in 2008, uh, that also uh, it's a great opportunity for us. Uh, we used to uh, lost a lot of money, right? For the 2005, 2006, we, we expand our business to different uh, cities in China, different tier cities in China. So we, we, we lost a lot of money. But for 2007, 2008, we re realized if we uh, went outside, if we go to outside for fundraising, it is quite impossible. So uh, the good thing for us is we are able to turn the business from the huge loss to uh, big profit. Uh, in 2008 as well. That gave us a lot of uh, uh, leverage um, uh, in the future. So this is our first uh, transition period from web to, to, uh, to smartphone. That happens around 2007 and 2008. Um, another major transition is uh, at the very beginning, um, we are pure uh, local live search uh, website, local live search uh, uh, um, mobile application. Uh, it's a pure media play, like uh, uh, Google local search, like uh, Yelp, right? It's a very low code, uh, very media oriented uh, business model. But uh, in 2010, something happened. Um, probably uh, some people uh, here still remember there's a company called Groupon, uh, uh, you, uh, s still there, right, in US. Uh, they Start, start a local, uh, local deal, a local group buy deals uh, in US and uh, also very successful. They, then they started uh, all the business from US to Europe to Southern America, uh, to a lot of Asia, to Japan, and even to China. So that's a great opportunity. We also uh, grasped the opportunity very fast and also very aggressive. But in China, you know, the uh, there are so many startups uh, work on the same project. So it's like a thousand group by side in China at that, that time. All the, um, I think hundreds of them are, are VC backed uh, startups. So uh, it's, uh, uh, the competition is fierce. Uh, so the good thing for us is that we are very persistent. Uh, we are very focused. Um, so the final, out of, Thousand uh, group by, uh, group by site. The only two survived. Uh, one is Meituan, one is Dianping. And uh, uh, as most of you uh, probably realized, and uh, uh, the two company merged uh, in 2015. Uh, later on, that was like five years, uh, uh, five years fight uh, for the thousand uh, group by site at that time. That's competition is just fierce. Uh, some of the uh, takeaways, I, I want to, because time is, uh, we have some time limit here. Um, just uh, two key takeaways um, from my understanding is, uh, one is uh, we are not start from a, a, a just a startup for the group I. And uh, only for the thousand of group I side, only Dianping has the baggage. We are the, used to be a media uh, uh, local search application uh, in China. We have like uh, already have five, uh, six years history at that time. But most of others are uh, just start from as a transaction, a transaction uh, uh, model, group by model. So for a company to transit from a media model to transaction model, for any company to change or to add on a major business model, it is just damn hard. And uh, uh, just give a 
give you a one example is uh, we, I just mentioned we become profitable in 2008. So when we started the transaction model, the group by model, you have to make a huge investment, huge loss. You just don't make money, right? In China, um, the user sub uh, subsidies is very, very popular. So most of our sales, they, they don't want to do the local deals, right? They, they make a lot of money on the advertising, but uh, uh, they think it's bad for the company to sacrifice our profit to do the local deals. So you see the, the barrier internal uh, is also already built up, right? So this is just one example. So any transition to any company is just too, so damn hard. Uh, it's, uh, you have to make a lot of uh, significant uh, um, effort uh, to, to change or to add on the, uh, the business model to, to your, uh, to your the, the company, to change it to a new company. It's very, very hard. And the uh, China market is um, so big and so diversified. And one of the lessons is um, uh, most founder of our major competitors, uh, they are uh, coming from tier three, tier four cities. And uh, the founders for Dianping, that's also a very bad thing is uh, uh, five of us are born in Shanghai, grew up in Shanghai. So that's also very, very bad. Uh, why is that? Is we have no sense about the tier three, tier four cities. We just have don't, no knowledge, no life experience about that. That's a big lesson as well. So, so nowadays probably you know a brand called Pinduoduo, right? A lot of people say have a lot of question about the Pinduoduo. Actually, um, the tier three, tier four, tier five cities is a lot of opportunity, a lot of demand. So, but back. 2012, 2011, we just don't know the tier three, tier four cities has such a huge demand, right? We are very dominant in tier one, tier two cities, but uh, we have no ideas about tier three, tier four cities. So uh, when we went to the tier three, tier four cities, we are the last one went to the tier three, tier four cities. We are so hesitant to expand our business to the tier three, tier four, tier five cities. So that's why we lost a lost lot of uh, time uh, um, compared to our other competitors. So just some lessons shared, right? I, I, I got tons of lessons if you want to learn for the past 15 years. The, the major thing I had is lessons. Uh, no, no, not much uh, successful stories. Um, this is the second transition uh, from the media to transaction. It's uh, also very, very hard. But we are able to become the final two, uh, final two survivors. That's uh, very, very important. And that's also, uh, we uh, just take a lot of, it's a quiet experience for my person as well. And uh, I learned a lot uh, during, this, uh, during this period. Um, the third one is uh, quite general. I cannot list a lot of detailed information here because, because we are public companies, so uh, no longer private companies. So uh, I put some of the brief number uh, from 10 to 60,000. Uh, when we start a business, we only have like five, 10 people. And nowadays it's over 60,000 employees, not including the food delivery guys. We have one million food delivery guys on the ground every day, one million. But the full-time staff is 60,000. That is, wow, it's grown too fast, and uh, uh, it becomes a lot of problems. Uh, it's also a huge learning curve from 10 to 60,000. Uh, also from one to 1,000, I just give you a, uh, give you a figure. Um, it's not only the one city, right? It's like we, uh, we have the business operation in thousand city, cities uh, in China. Basically, we cover all the cities in China right now. So uh, the thing is, the, from small to big, it's no longer fun at all. I still remember, I, the most I enjoyed for my as an entrepreneur is uh, at the very beginning. Uh, the company is very small. 
the business is very simple. Uh, we only have few people. I still remember when I returned to China in 2005, 2005, 2006, we still spend a lot of time to go to a restaurant. Uh, well, whenever we find out a new restaurant, we just right, uh, uh, went there to try the, try the food. Right? We still have time at that time because the business model is simple, the organization is so small, and uh, it's very easy to handle. And then now it becomes the 60,000. It's no longer firm. And uh, lots of meetings, lots of struggles. Uh, and uh, so that's the, I think that's the, all the company you have to overcome, right? It becomes a big company. Uh, when I uh, wrote this um, uh, slides, I, I, I sort of uh, recalled uh, one time, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, I. I, I read the Wall Street Journal. There's an article called uh, GE Empowered American Centuries, or one century, a century. Now it burns out, right? GE is like a bubble, a light bubble, right? In light, the American for century. Uh, GE has 100-year-old And now it burns out. Uh, GE used to be such a great company. Right, we hide a lot of talents from GE. The GE have a big site in Shanghai, right? We, had, we hide a lot of uh, talents, very good talents from GE. Uh, they are very well trained and uh, very knowledgeable. And now the company just burned out. Uh, we can feel, uh, at least in China, a lot of GE site closed. Uh, they have huge layoff in China as well. I don't know uh, what happened in the US. For sure, GE is not in very good position. Such a great company nowadays. You just um, the, uh, when I when I when I saw the article, it's kind of uh, I feel very uh, sad, right? I mean, it's such a great company. So another thing I want to mention is all the organization have the lifetime, right? So it's really about five years, ten years, um, twenty years, or hundred years. Uh, really depends. So it is very very important to build. Uh, uh, the management system and uh, um, the mission, the vision, uh, the culture becomes very, very important. Uh, becomes, becomes core of the strategy. It's no longer the business model. Uh, I think the management, the how you manage the company, how you build a management system is more important than the business model. So the organization I just mentioned, the purpose, the objectives, the culture. So um, it's a big topic, so I just don't, uh, I don't want to expand uh, because the, the time, time constraint. Um, uh, the, the last one I want to mention is the, the finance, as a CFO, right? I, I used to be the CFO, I just retired uh, a couple months ago. Um, I still the advisor for the senior management team, uh, but I retired uh, the full-time um, position. Um, for the whole financing history, uh, anybody, uh, the $13.3 billion uh, for the combined company history from 2004 to 2018. Last year, we just listed in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange uh, last uh, September. The company raised $13.3 billion. It's not an achievement I want to, as I wrote the number, it's really not an achievement. I think it's, we spend such amount of money <laughs> to create a business. Um, it's the responsibility, I think, uh, the responsibility for the shareholder, for the investors. Uh, that's the amount of money we raised. It's uh, quite a quite amount. Um, I still remember very beginning in the 2005, we went to the UC Berkeley business plan competition. We used the Dianping business uh, plan to, to attend the business competition. Um, 2005, we went to the semi final, but we, we didn't get the, I think the, the top four got the kind of a venture funding for the top four. Um, uh, but we didn't, we, I think we are top eight, uh, number eight or number seven, something like that. I think the major reason is that they don't trust our Chinese boy. If I give you money, you return to China. <laughs> Nobody knows what, what's going to happen, right? 
So that's a very bad thing. I, 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 I spend, uh, my, my professor helps me to raise money on the Sand Hills. We visit all the major venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. We visit the uh, Mayfield, uh, I still remember GGV, uh, Lightspeed, uh, you just name it, any big names. Even the WR Hyper in San Francisco. I, is Jimmy here? I think, uh, yeah, Jimmy, yeah. I, I, went to, I went to your office, certainly. I think at that time, uh, Zhang Ying is still there, right? Zhang Ying is still there. I, I went to your, but uh, nobody gives m me money. I think the major reason is they don't trust me, right? <laughs> if I give you a million dollars, right? <laughs> you just go to Africa, right? So, uh, that's, but it's a quiet experience. I still like the experience. And uh, after I returned to China, uh, we start to engage. At that time in China, there's only a few venture capital firms in China. I've, I still remember the IDG, um, uh, Langend. Langend is still there, and Acer Tech. There used to be an Acer Technology venture capital in, in China. W. Harper is also investing in China, but there's no presence in China, I believe. Most big names, there's no franchise, no branch in China at that time. Now all the major VCs are in China right now, right? We have like thousands, thousands of the venture capital firms uh, in China right now. So, but unfortunately in 2005, uh, we don't have many choices. The good thing is the, in 2005, I think in the May or around the second quarter of the 2005, I think uh, uh, Neil just founded the Sequoia, Sequoia China Fund, uh, Sequoia China Fund one. I, I believe we are uh, his first investment deal in China. It's a very small deal, right? We only raise, we only ask for one million US dollars. He, he wants to put more money, but we want to, because the valuation he gave us is so low. So we say just give us the one million US dollars. So. Uh, it's very quick. The, the reason is very quick is uh, when Neil was the CFO of the um, uh, C Chip, uh, we got a hookup. I still remember in 2004, uh, the winter time, I back to Ch Shanghai. We we had a brief talk with Neil. Uh, at that time, he's still the CFO of the uh, 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 C Chip, but he wants to invest us at the time. Wanted to invest us at the time, and uh, I discuss with Tao, I think we don't want to get money from corporate, right, strategic. That's no good, right? Uh, so the one of the lessons, don't engage with the strategic investor too early. That's not good. But second, uh, but in 2007, actually, we, uh, we got an offer from the Google, and uh, I think it's uh, also now is a good, very good friend of, uh, of mine, is the, the uh, at, at that time, he, he is the real person bring the Google to China, right? But now the Google exited China already. Uh, in 2007, me, uh, uh, James Mee uh, uh, had a negotiation with us. Uh, he wants to uh, represent Google to acquire us. He gave us an offer. It's a big number, I think. To be honest, it's a big number. And uh, we had like two days discussion and uh, and eventually we d we think we want to continue the company right we don't want to be acquired so as a matter of fact it's a good decision um, so um, instead of getting acquired by Google uh, we just ask for the investment so Google invest like three million US dollars at the time and now we made like three more than 300 million US dollars for Google uh, they still have some shares uh, for our company, and uh, every quarter they, uh, I think in 2017, uh, they uh, they just uh, uh, sold off some shares. I think maybe their earnings getting very good, right? <laughs> they got like 100 million US dollars from from our deals. Yeah, that's some some financing history, and uh, uh, it's very very important uh, during the whole. Uh, journey of the st as a startup, we need a lot of investors to support us, to support us for our um, continuous growth and also the new business models. So I think uh, the time probably went out. Uh, the, the 
the last thing I just want to um, mention is uh, always as an entrepreneur, uh, the three things I, I always want, want myself to keep in mind is don't forget the origin, don't forget uh, why you start a company. So that's very, very important. And uh, always keep hungry and uh, stay humble. The third thing is uh, for any time you just think long term. Um, it will uh, overcome a lot of challenges. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Ye. Um, um, Mr. Ye, although, uh, thanks for sharing with us so many different crises. Although you don't like uh, Mei Tuan Dian Ping, but we kind of attach that name we that lets us eat better and live better. Yeah, and then we calculate uh, uh, Mr. Ye is uh, our uh, awardee for the uh, uh, CIE Entrepreneur of the Year. Thank you to accept this honor. Yes.